I go back now. You didn't tell me. You didn't remind me about my story. I remind myself this time. <laughs> so he started his meditation, our Lord Mahavira. And then what happened? You know what happened, right? No. no? So easy to guess. The serpent came back. <laughs> Who else is there? Hmm? The black giant serpent came out of its hole, hissing fiercely. It has not seen a human being in a long time. The man was standing firm and fearless with closed eyes. Oh, he didn't like that. The servant never saw such a <laughs> man like that. The servant was very surprised. Yeah. It looks at Mahavira with its venomous eyes. Normally, a snake has venomous tongue and fang, yeah, and a mouth, and the throat inside where the venom comes from, right? But this guy, his venom came also through the eyes. There must be some very special demon, demonic serpent. Yes, the demon, they are not always uh, invisible, eh? They don't always have fang long like this and the hair, you know, <laughs> or uh, big red eyes or uh, a hairy body, thing like that. They sometimes take a form of human. And if they have enough merit, somehow, then they can stay in human form for a long time. And you could never tell between a real human or a demonic one, yeah? And you also could not tell between a real animal and a demonic one, such as this one. So it's better you don't look into animals' eyes and the human's eyes if you're not sure, okay? Look into the third eye of every being, huh? That will bless them and keep you also safe from their influence. You don't have to hate any person, any beings, even a demonic one. But you just have to also protect yourself. You can forgive a tiger or a snake for biting you, but please don't come and say, I forgive you, touch his head, and say, I forgive you, or bring him home to, to show that you're really tolerant and have a good heart. You have to combine love and wisdom. Capito? Yes. Capish? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love doesn't mean you always have to live with enemy, if you can avoid. Uh, love doesn't mean you have to go deep into the jungle, into the den of the tiger, and go there and tell him, I love you. I truly love you. <laughs> I come all this way to show you my love. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Please don't, huh? <laughs> don't be silly. Tiger, they don't take the five precepts, okay? They don't know what ahimsa mean in Sanskrit or in Hindi, yeah. So don't blame me. Say, Master, teach us to love all beings. <laughs> if you try to love the tiger this way, then uh, please recite the five names, the gift before you go in the den and be ready to go <laughs> up <laughs> to heaven. <laughs> If that's what you want, that's your freedom of choice. I will not uh, stop you, but uh, please tell your parents and everybody goodbye first, okay, <laughs> before you go and find the tiger. Now, like flames from a ball of fire, its poisonous eyes emitted waves of venom. It hisses awesomely. But all this had no effect whatsoever on Mahavira. Please don't copy him. He is protected by all heavens and goddesses, yeah, at that time. Even though he doesn't require their assistance, but they always keep an eye on him because he is so pure and so determined to be enlightened, to help other beings. So when the Buddha was sitting alone under the Bodhi tree, he wasn't alone. You can see all the heavenly beings would be around him, but invisibly. Because, I tell you why. One second, okay? I put it there so I won't forget. <laughs> Too long. Ah, perfect size. Because often the highly enlightened being, or not yet 
enlightened, but will be highly enlightened. They will not require mostly any help of any heavenly or physical beings. And even like one time one of the practitioner sitting in meditation, uh, or maybe Buddha, I don't remember who, the God Chakra appeared before him. And the practitioner tell, oh, yeah, what business you do here? I said, oh, I just come to say hello, pay respect. I said, okay, good, now you can leave. I said, no, how come? Yes, you don't welcome me, I am the God. Many beings would be happy to see me. Uh, he said, yeah, but you obstruct my <laughs> concentration and my vision. Yes. So, uh, in many cases of the very uh, important enlightened beings when they are meditating, even though they are still not yet in a higher level, uh, all the heavenly beings, many, you know, they will take turns to come and take care of him in case of some very serious problem. But they cannot interfere uh, without the permission of that enlightened being, whether or not he has already become Buddha or not. Therefore, they are invisible. Okay, they hide themselves. Uh, within the wind, within the, the sun rays, so nobody can see them. My hufa, my protectors are also like that. I have also normal protectors, but I have uh, protectors also from Yosku. Yeah, they don't let me see them at all, because uh, when I'm in retreat, I should not be disturbed normally. But one time, I don't know why I just venture outside of my protected area, yeah, without uh, letting them know. Normally I stay inside the gate, about nine meters distant from, for example, the wall of my cave, okay, nine meters. And around there they would tell me to build a little ring of protection, yeah, about this big, this so wide, and all around, okay, nine meters around. And that day, I don't know why I walk outside. And uh, when, you know, sometimes I walk outside for fresh air, do walking meditation outside or inside, before I forget, remind me, the gate, inside. And then normally these uh, the other normal protectors, they can stay long or they can take turn. But the Yosku goddesses, they have to take turn. And they go through different channels. They have to build different channels to come down. They don't go through all this uh, turbulent world, you know, of, of the lower level, like astral or second level, for example. So they don't, they don't have to be affected by this kind of low energy because they cannot bear. So we build a little channel and they tunnel, I mean channel or tunnel, whatever they call it, and they come down through that and they go back through there. So they have nothing to do with any world, the safest way. And every two days, they have to change guards because they cannot, even with all the equipment of protection for them, they still cannot stay longer than two days. They will not be able to withstand the cause, atmosphere and energy of our planet. Every two days, we even have to build new channel, okay? And they come down and build, or they come up and build at the same time, yeah? As they go, they build. Just like if we dive deep into the sea, then we must have the diving suits, yeah, and the oxygen mask and oxygen tank. And they have to have also connection with the boat, a uh, ship or something, in case something, okay, they can uh, call for help, okay? Yeah. The same, same way like that. The EOSC goddesses had to protect themselves in different ways. And still, just as the divers who dive deep into the ocean, they cannot stay there forever, uh, despite all their equipment. And even the submarine, for example, if you're inside the submarine, the submarine still need to go up sometimes. Similarly, because there are two different worlds. Our world is very coarse. That's why we have this body, so that we can bear it. Without this body, you cannot. Without this body, you will suffer too much. Uh, when the baby comes out of the mother's womb at the time of birth, 
they suffer too much. It's like thousands of needles are pinching them everywhere. And all the radicals or the elements or whatever in the air, you know, attack them also. Until after a while, then they get used to it. And if any baby has luck to be fed by mother milk, then they have more a resistance to the attack of things around us, the elements or the radicals, they call them. Hmm? Otherwise, they cannot bear it. Their skin is too tender, and they just came from the protected area inside, so they came out and contact with our world, you know, they're so polluted and uh, very uh, contagious and all that. To be born is truly uh, also an agonizing event of our life. That's why the Buddha included birth as one of the four suffering. Yeah? Birth, old age, sickness, and death. They're all similar category. Imagine that. Uh, of course, a small little sickness is not counted, okay? Like you have a little runny nose or something, or a little cough, then nowadays we have medicine. And by the way, I tell you again, and one of our sisters, she could not eat because whenever she eats, she has some stomach pain. And I say, why didn't you go to doctor? She said, oh, it's just karma. Karma until she became so skinny already. Mm. Cannot do that, okay? Maya created karma, but God created doctors and medicine. Use it, for God's sake. I keep telling you since uh, three decades already that you have to go to see a doctor if you're sick. Just like if some plants are withering near the Aviv house, you have to water them. Don't just sit next to it and meditate and think your meditation power will revive the tree. The tree needs different things. The tree needs water and soil and sunshine. This is the way it works in this physical realm. We live in a physical world. We need physical means to take care of physical problem. Sit around a newly planted tree, dry, and he just meditate and chanting and singing. This is crazy. You give him water, that's all he needs. He don't care about your meditation, your prayers, nada. Your good heart is appreciated, but water <laughs> is even more appreciated. You got that? Yes. Oh, please, have some common sense. That's not even wisdom, okay? Don't think you're wise if you water the tree. It's ridiculous. That's common sense, okay? Yeah. In the physical world, we use physical mean always to take care of physical things. And sometimes when it's really necessary, when it really doesn't work well, then we can pray, of course. Prayer is always necessary, whether or not you use physical mean, okay? Always necessary. We need the help of heavens. Yeah, but we, because we're in this physical body, we need to also exert our own power of the mind, the brain, and the physical body, okay? Don't just always rely on heaven. Heaven cannot help you to drive the car. You are eating it, your food, so heaven don't help you to eat it. So why should heaven help you in other things? Heaven, of course, help you to maybe better digestion, huh? If you pray and you give thanks before you eat, that's the thing to do, okay? To purify your food, that they can do. Uh, invisible help they give to us, yeah? But physical obligation, physical uh, duty, we have to fulfill, understand? Yes. All right, go back to our story, Lord Mahavira's story. The servant used his venomous you know, gaze to try to burn and kill Lord Mahavira, but it didn't affect him. So maybe he really was truly very densely protected by his own purity of aura yeah, and light, and also maybe heaven's blessing. 
Oh, I forgot about the story, my story, right? I went to the gate one time, uh, a few months ago. I, I was meditating on retreat in my cave, yeah? Normally, I don't venture out of the gates. I just walk around the cave, you know, wherever there's a clearance. And then uh, that day, uh, I don't know why I have a phone with me, you know, just in case I need to contact. Normally, in retreat, I shut off all the phone, yeah? But for security reason, I always keep one, because I'm alone, okay, always alone. So I kept one phone, and I just walking, walking, and I see some beautiful flowers outside my gate. It was springtime. So I, I forgot that I am on retreat, and I should not venture outside, I forgot. So I opened the lock, walk outside. I run out very quickly, you know? Because I see the flowers, I love, I love flowers, I love trees, I love things that are artistic in nature. And then the hufa, you know, the protectors from Yosku, they couldn't react quick enough, so I caught a glimpse of them. I said, who is that? <laughs> you know, I caught a glimpse of them. I said, who is that? Uh, but it's not like I see you, okay? Uh, there's a strong presence. Yeah, and a uh, split in seconds, it's transparent, almost no visible, and almost no transparent even. So I also was startled, because they were startled, you know, they were scared. <laughs> because I walked out so suddenly, yeah, and they did not uh, prepare. Yeah, I, I was not uh, good. <laughs> I walked out so quickly, briskly, you know, and then they tried to stay away from my path, and I caught a glimpse of them. It's not like you cannot even say that it's, it's so visible, like a transparent sheet of a plastic, nothing like that. But I knew it, and I know it is there, you know, and you can, you can just catch a glimpse, it's like something moving, but nothing. You cannot see an image or anything at all. It's even thinner than transparent. And then I said, who is that? And they said, oh, sorry, your protectors. Oh, I said, oh, I'm sorry too. <laughs> <laughs> we both are very sorry. <laughs> one walked out unexpectedly, and the other one didn't get away <laughs> quick enough. <laughs> I said, okay, okay, I just take some photo. You surround me, okay, I'll be back soon. Mm. So that was okay. I'm just telling you an example of how the guardians, they don't manifest in a physical form or even transparent form for you to see, because they're not supposed to uh, disturb your concentration. You're not supposed to talk to them or anything, they're as less as possible around you so that you don't have to be attracted to anything. And that's what my experience. So therefore, I knew, even though Lord Mahavira is not uh, visibly protected by heavens, but he must have been. The serpent was now even more astonished. He asked, Till today, every man I came across has been consumed by my first venomous hiss, and this man stands still, absolutely unmoved. He probably asked himself, okay, not asking Mahavira, or just talk out loud. The snake don't talk, I guess. Do they? No. <laughs> Maybe he talked in his heart. So the serpent glanced at the sun and once again focused his gaze at Mahavira and hissed at him with renewed anger, but in vain. Why did he look at the sun? Anybody know? Hmm? Recharging, wow, how you know that? You have been serpent in your last life? <laughs> cool, that's what I think also, eh? Yeah, we, the people recharge themselves from, from the sun also. We call, we call them solarian, because they eat from the sun energy. They gaze at the sun ten minutes in the morning when the sun rise, and ten minutes in the evening before the sun set to recharge themselves. Don't do it. And don't blame me if you become skeleton. No? Don't try too hard, okay? Eat your normal meal, just don't eat too much so that you can meditate. Mm? Not that all the wisdom go to your stomach and you have empty head. <laughs> so the snake slithers 
from the line of the expected fall of the body and then with all its force sank its fangs in Mahavira's toe and injected all its venom. Oh God. He looked at him thinking that he might fall. Okay, I didn't fall. So he went all that way and sank his fangs into the toe of the master. Yeah. The snake then drew back and waited expectantly again, in vain. Oh, my God! What kind of man is he, this man, Lord Mahavira? I told you I never <laughs> see such a resistance like this. He must be made of iron. Huh? Don't try, huh? Don't try to see what you're made of, huh? I'm sure <laughs> you know already, right? The angry serpent vexed Further, by its failure, stung Mahavira twice again. All its three attacks were wasted. Nothing worked. So Mahavira stood undisturbed. The serpent was astonished to see only milk oozing out from his wounds instead of blood where it had stung Mahavira's toe. Lord Mahavira Swami was standing unmoved still. So, his face was glowing, and on his lips was a charming smile. <laughs> I don't know if I can smile in that case. <laughs> hey, this guy is Superman. <laughs> not to talk about Lord or not, Superman. Like a blooming rose, his smile was. Yeah. His eyes reflected the inner compassion. The serpent continued to stare with surprise. Confused by his uh, failure, it was lost in his thoughts. Involved in his spiritual pursuits, Mahavira uttered in his deep and tranquil voice, Oh, Chandakaushik, open your inner eyes. Chandakaushik, mean, maybe it's the name of the snake or the type of the snake. I guess this is the way you address this type of snake in a former uh, time. He said to the snake, Okay, let's make it more simple. Oh, snake. Okay. <laughs> That's probably what he said, with all his love and charming smile. 